and welcome to Fancy Football League. This week, sorry, do that again. <laughs> oh, I where amateur, I was. amateurism. Who are we on the word? <laughs> I forgot the whole thing. Don't know why I was here. You didn't. You weren't <laughs> drinking out of Terry Christian's glass last week. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for play your inside right. With your host, Bruce Forsyth! <laughs> oh, nice to see you! No, I'm sorry. Shall I do that again? Fuck it. Um, <laughs> oh, it's all so well, wasn't it? <laughs> Well, of course, the FA Cup didn't count for our fantasy league, but uh, it's given me a chance to round things up as we approach halfway in the first of the half series. Fantasy football. This week we'll be showing you how to play fantasy football. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, hurrah, a man running at me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you run slightly less camply next time? <laughs> <laughs> Despite problems in the past, it's nice to see that Maradona still has a good read right. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, <laughs> I think you should do that bit again. No, I like it like that. Okay. This week, Ryan Clough is retiring and Scotland lost 5 0. Soon as all the board gonna fire him, he's flopped and so have Aston Bill. Aston wants you to have told them you crap. If you cannot beat Oldham, Man United won the league and Scotland lost 5 0. This week, Chrissy Waddle was chosen as player of the year. If you've got a very nose, then don't have a go at Joe Kinnear. He'll be racist and horrid. Hey, what ever happened to Norwich? I don't know, but I do know that Scotland lost. And now, Phoenix from the Flames. And now, the fantasy football statistician. Hold on. What is this fantasy football? How does it work? But you see, the FA have been in love with Kevin Keegan for so long, they want him to, to, to be manager, but that won't happen for two or three years yet. So Terry Venables is still the favourite, but will he take the job and have to cut back on a lifestyle that's uh, lived close to the edge somewhat? Give me damn I asked Carol outside if Barry Fry stank. <laughs> yeah. Because doesn't he look like he would? Yeah, he does, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but to, a, to, a, to a credit, she said, not at all. Really? Oh. Getting back to football on the television. <laughs> it's all changed now, of course. They've got on-the-spot reporters all over the country waiting to give up-to-the-minute match reports. <laughs> he was obviously in the box with Joe Sinstead, wasn't he? <laughs> 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 
we lost the ability. We were hoping to get through the series no, without a general sin It joke. comes to something in this country when you can't masturbate in a pornographic <laughs> yeah. cinema without being <laughs> I mean, God knows we've all done it. <laughs> anyway. He's a scout at Birmingham now. Yeah. Yeah. Cleans up around Bally, presumably. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any droppings. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> no, uh, the week after that, we've got... Can you shut your legs, Callum? Would you like another poem? Yeah, well, go on, I'm always here. up for a poem. Who are you? There was an old monk in Siberia who developed a bit of hysteria. Escaped from his cell with a roar and a yell and ran off with a mother superior. I felt that leaving the boom boom was an error. Yeah. <laughs> Basil, you've had that jacket on for a few years, has to be said. Have <laughs> <laughs> you got any other? <laughs> I'll just try and translate that. Well, instead of missing. Pardon? I didn't know what you said. What did you say? What did you say about it? What's happened to Basil? Basil's drunk. <laughs> so, Basil, what about you? What would you say about your season? Well. <laughs> oh, God, the aliens have done it to Basil as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm melting, I'm melting! <laughs> You're all right, Basil. What? What, what do you want to know? What do you want to know? <laughs> oh, what on earth are you doing? That's what I want to know. <laughs> it's all, it's all gone know, wrong. I Tell us a joke, you, Basil. Do you know, my girlfriend Mavis, she's so many westerns, she sits down to dinner side saddle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's Basil <that's laughs> being a joke, too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome John uh, Paul, uh, George, uh, and Ginger. No. Well, I put John Jensen there. He's got a pun. Right, let's go. Like, uh, <laughs> Anyway, letters have already been flooding in for the new series, including one brilliant discovery by Stephen Mowat of Southfields. And he's discovered this. <laughs> now, look at that face. Can't you see him thinking, I don't think much of this Matthew Letizia, do you? There he is with a very large sack of money as well. Now, this is actually... Uh, <laughs> oh, dear. This is actually a book for kids, and it's about a man called Joe Lake, who just happens to look incredibly like Terry Venables. Not incredible enough for the studio audience to laugh at it, but uh, <laughs> beyond that, it's also got some brilliant chapters. Here's a good one. Uh, chapter 21, Joe drives past a big rubbish bin. And chapter 28, Mr Parker gives Joe some paper. And of course, <laughs> chapter... Good cha read. It is. Chapter 67, Joe aggressively asks for a much larger Christmas bonus. <laughs> <laughs> and if you like books about bin men, and I know a lot of people do, um, <laughs> There's a, there's a bibliography at the back. We're going to go on about it. We are. It said, Books to Read About Dossman. And uh, it says, The Dossman by Anne Stewart. I bet that's all right. And uh, Mr Westbrook is a Dossman, which sounds more like a bit of graffiti than a book. <laughs> and finally, a book called We Work for the Council, and not many people can say that. <laughs> oh, that's enough. Stato. Well, chapter 33, my news round. The thing about Southampton this season is that things haven't worked out for them first time around. They've kept trying and trying, you know, until, until they've uh, sorted it out. Mm. It's a bit like this bloke here. There you go, look. Yeah. Look, he's, he's, look at that determination. He's really... He's not going to let it go, <laughs> is he? <laughs> That's the <a> sort of... <laughs> 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 and you think that... That's a bit. 
<laughs> Come on, mate. Get up there, mate. For God's sake. <laughs> I like the rub of the hands at the end there. <laughs> got Gary Mabber. Um, yeah. And uh, I don't know if, you, if you've been to White Hart Lane recently, but there's a lot of building work going on. They've got a lot of funny looking shadows on the pitch. And also some in the crowd as well. <laughs> <laughs> and this is. Um, Cut in. We'll let him cut in just a second. Cut it out later. Well, um, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the editor of this Can program? Can I just say something <laughs> Carry on, mate, on yeah. behalf of my my uh, uh, grandson, Roy Hattersley? Can I say something? <laughs> Certainly. I remember when uh, Stanley Matthews played for Stoke City, Mr Hattersley. It was what what the the Why team. Why did my grandfather was... call me Mr Hattersley? <laughs> 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 If you can say rounding on Match of the Day, Saturday night, I'll give you another 50 quid. How would you mean another 50 quid? Exactly. I mean, yeah. I'll give I you 65 quid. quid. Yeah. <laughs> rounding. I don't think I can get that one in, really. Rounding. 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 Yeah. You'll do it. I'll trust you on that one. <laughs> and here we see Letizia... Rounding, no, no. Just, yeah, <laughs> Tell you what, Alan, I'll give you thirty-five quid if on match of the day you say David Mellor's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll give you a hundred. <laughs> What's happened to football supporters? Too expensive. Yeah. And then uh, you've also got a lot of Mickey Mouse teams, haven't you? You know, City. Yeah, yeah. like City. <laughs> well, you know, a lot, a lot of the, a lot of the. I mean, half the teams in the Premiership, you know, deserve to go down. Really, they're not. They're not big enough. Oh, no, no, they are really sad. You know, a lot of the fans and all that. And they, they kind of, they don't go. They only go to about three matches a season. But they'll kind of turn up shows like this, wearing the shirt and that. Sad old, sad old, sad old, sad old, sad old, sad old. I think they're always jealous about Manchester United, with a great British institution. I think the problem, Terry, is that most teams just draw fans from the local area. Yeah, yeah also the Manchester United. Well, they don't. Oh, no, they? no, but they are. They're an international uh, club, aren't they, really? You know, I mean, they're, they're thinking... They're actually thinking of uh, dropping the Manchester from the name and just calling themselves United. Because if you say that you're a United fan, everybody knows who you support. They're not going to think, oh, you mean West Ham or Newcastle or some Mickey Mouse crowd. They know you mean the glorious Reds. Uh, I think we're going to get a lot of fan mail after this appearance. Is it just the Wing wizard again. Crossing. Oh, too long. Well, there are a lot of critics of young Ryan Giggs, but people forget he is still only 21. Ryan Giggs, he must be, what, 30 now? <laughs> is he? Well, how old do you think he is? I forget. Now, people say Blackburn are boring, but they ignore the fact that they've got one of the most exciting strike forces in the Premier League. They're a boring team, aren't they, Blackburn? Oh, dear, the goalkeeper's boring. The defence is boring. The midfield's boring. They're a boring team, Blackburn. You know, I've completely written off Arsenal. Have you? Have I what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe there's such a thing as terrorist humour? Terrorist humour? You know, people say that you know, they're always funny, you know, people on, in the, on the terraces. No. That. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, that was terrible. When you see one. that thing when Saturday comes, it used to say, the man behind me, and it's always like, the man behind me said, when you are tired of London, you are tired of life. And it, usually the man behind you is going, you fucking bastards! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I pay my money! <laughs> As we're told often enough, officials don't change their minds, right? Except for this incident here, where your player, Shearer, he's got a foul, and then the linesman thinks, oh, no, I'm not going to give it. I'm going to give a throw the other way. <laughs> and Shearer says, oi, mate, you waved, you waved your flag. No, I never. Yes, you did. What's, what's that thing in your hand? <laughs> the thing about Stanley Matthews was that he played when old football was rubbish. So... <laughs> so... so mm, nothing sweeping about that, oh, Steve. Is, oh. So pundits at the time couldn't actually cope with the complexity of some of his moves. Stan Matthews, international right-winger. You'll notice when dribbling his peculiar action of stopping the ball and then proceeding. <laughs> the partner is W. Spencer, left back and a splendid rubber of opposing forwards. Also, also, what must have made it easier for him in those days was that he was being marked by members of his own team. <laughs> 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 you have to see the statistics of the calls that they don't get on 606, because 90% of the calls must be, I'd just like to say, David Mellor's a complete cunt, mustn't <laughs> <laughs> it? Hey, you said that last time you were on. Every time, every I time come you're on, on. the sure knowledge yeah. that you have to edit it out. Yes. <laughs> David, Frank, tell them how to play fantasy football. I'm replacing him with Kareen of Chelsea. Yeah? He's not playing at the moment at all. Well, that's, that's probably all a good right. move. Yeah. Good move. <laughs> get rid of David May, City fan. Hang on, Terry, Terry, yeah, Terry, yeah, Terry, say, before you get... Terry, uh, can I just explain to Terry that yeah. what? you're making the mistake that, about fantasy football that anybody gives a flying <laughs> fuck about your team. <laughs> <laughs> that isn't the way it works. I've, I've been up all night. <laughs> also, it's not the way that you just come on and say fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work like that, either. We thought this was one of the best lookalikes that we had sent in. Um, this was actually sent in from Megan and Lauren Evans in Wolverhampton, and it's, a, it's just a kid's book, but for anyone who thinks that his first few internationals have proved that really he picks rubbish, uh, Terry Venables, have a look at this. Put your feet down, Dave, and let have a good look. There you go. <laughs> <That's terrible. laughs> He's like with a slightly inflated face. <laughs> and there's a chapter in here, it says... Um, Terry Venables with the sack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Venables. Sugar wrote this, of course. Terry Venables goes to the depot with a large black sack containing Matthew Letizia. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. Now, last week, uh, Russell Grant was on the show. And now, the fantasy football statistician. You're a bit of an Altrincham fan, aren't you, if I remember right? Yeah, they played uh, Tottenham in the 79 FA Cup and got a draw, so I think that uh, John King and his lads will be looking forward to taking them on again. But I saw Spurs last weekend, and that goal Jurgen Klinsmann scored really was a very special effort. And he scored again in the, in the week for Germany in their World Cup win in Moldova. And uh, I think that he's made a big difference and a big impact to the Premiership, and this season it's been superb. And the quality of the goals <laughs> last week we saw in the news round, Letizia <laughs> and... Uh, Sorry, I'll, I'll be I'll see Sorry, David, season. but I mean, it's <laughs> real genuine lovers of <laughs> football. No, no, I think it should come back. No, the, the Premiership uh, this season's off oh, of fantastic goals and fantastic entertainment. Is he still there's no going better on? league in the, the country. Yeah, and I think I've that actually, that uh, I've actually knitted a cardigan uh, <laughs> since that sentence started. Yeah. Actually, Sata, you mentioned the other week on the show that you support Altrincham. Is that true? Yeah. You do. Well, we had a letter from Richard Garside, who lives in Altrincham, and he says, I have a question for Stato. What is the chip shop next to Altrincham's ground called? The Robins Retreat. The what? The Robins Retreat. Oh. <laughs> 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 and uh, you spent a lot of time in that chip shop, do you? Um, well, I think it changed hands, actually, a few years ago. <laughs> no, that's a... Uh, what do you mean, it changed hands? Used to, well, the, the shop was taken over by a different person to 
the one it used to be owned by. Oh, I see, yes. <laughs> what it normally he, means. Was he, called, <laughs> was he called Robin, the uh, person? No, it's, it's called Robin's Retreat because uh, Robin's is a nickname for Altrium. Uh, oh, is it? And while you're in your, this chip shop, have you ever by any chance eaten all the pies? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here's a clip of Altrium on the attack. That's one way of altering them. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, dear, this is the 1930s. Let me a round of applause for yeah. that. You know, the first match uh, was a great, great cup, a great cup tie in every way, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, it, it, I mean, it was, you know, drama right from the end. There was quality goals. Drama was... right from the end? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of drama is that? <laughs> yeah. That's how I got beat off. <laughs> Somebody told me, actually, I, I met one of Stato's old schoolmates, and they told me that there was a cup final that Man United was in. You'll remember this, Stato. And because he was a bit of a Man United fan at school, they, uh, they locked him in a room and wouldn't let him watch the cup <laughs> final. <laughs> oh, Is well, that a true story? Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's still deeply scarred. You shouldn't yeah. have brought that out. Yeah, no. But it's nice to think there's been a certain continuity in <laughs> Stato's life. Leave it out, Dicky. Leave it out, Dicky. Leave it out, Dicky. Leave it out, Dicky. We broke these glasses as well. Like they bust, so be careful. Oh, for now, who sake. would come a calling this time of the night? Oh, hello, Jeff. Who was you coming to? Hello, I've come with Joe Lake, the Dutchman. <laughs> One of the problems about watching football on the telly is sometimes the crowd will start a chant and the commentator will criticise them for it. Well, it depends on the commentator, really. Mr. Tyson got it wrong on this occasion. Definitely got it wrong. Mr. Tyson definitely got it wrong. Cheat, cheat, cheat is the chance. Quite rightly so. <laughs> but one of the things about Bolton is you, you may know is that uh, there's this commentator who uh, yeah. on his yeah. videos called Dave Higson, who's a bit of a favourite of ours. And one of the things you hate commentators and pundits and things, but he's great. You see, like when there's a pitch invasion normally, a lot of commentators they'll condemn the supporters. But <laughs> Dave takes a slightly different approach, isn't to this? The police being a bit silly here. Silly scenes here from the police. When Bolton fans, <laughs> nothing more than the happy, wanting to cheer the team off. The police, in fact, acting like pigs, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, commentators nowadays, they know... They think they've got a bit more technique. You know, they know about they know the patterns of the Tactics game. Tactics and techniques. Oh, they know all that yeah. sort of stuff, uh. don't they? They've become much better at reading the game than they used to be. Yeah. You know, they're doing some time wasting Brighton, too. And maybe this is the time to catch them on the break while they're all up here, up at our end. It's <laughs> 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 I think the, the public should know about the, the you know the uh, sleazy side of fantasy football. Though I've heard I've heard some very strange rumours about people buying sort of wheeling and dealing week to week. You know, on insider information. You know, have they been? Oh yeah, yeah. Like, like, like oh yeah, yeah. Uh, this man here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's Bought that? Gillespie before it was in the paper that he was going. Oh, I bought um, Gillespie. Oh. He did. He did. I bought he did. Gillespie on <laughs> CFAX information. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly think that uh, CFAX can be accused of sleaze. It might be accused of sloos on our <laughs> telly. That's a CFAX <laughs> joke, which we'll let pass. But, um, <laughs> I get it. There's like misprints. Can I try the other one about Wimbledon? Didn't Lineker once say that, that watching CFAX was more exciting than watching Wimbledon? Well, I'll tell you, I actually do watch CFAX on a Saturday and just watch the score steadily change as the afternoon <laughs> progresses. <laughs> It's very sad, uh, isn't it? It's very uh, sad. Not on ITV, obviously. Have you got enough to... money to pay for a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs>
let's have a look <laughs> at uh, the greatest <laughs> moment in the career of Forbes Phillips and Masters. Oh, Phillips and Masters touching Kemp at the far post. There you go, you nearly you go. scored. <laughs> 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 That was the one and only at Plymouth Argyle. I was there three and a half years. I never scored a goal. That was the nearest I came to it. Really? Uh, to I used to get a nosebleed if I went over the halfway line. No, you were a defender. <laughs> yes. Uh, Have you met uh, Marcus Bignot? No. Hello, Marcus. All right. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and you? <laughs> Wonderful, wasn't it? See, what you don't do, you boo, dead cocky, you two. But these two blokes are really, really good at football. <laughs> I've realised that. They must be, mustn't they? Yeah, I've realised that. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got a game. No. <laughs> And then you make him look like a twat. In <laughs> <laughs> one sense. Well, you'd say, oh, this is your best ever moment, look. Um, <laughs> uh, you nearly score for Plymouth, uh, like that. <laughs> and he's all dressed up, come all this way, and you're going, uh, like that. He played in the went, first yeah, division. Yeah. Stage. He played yeah. for Luton. Yeah. yeah. Well done, Forbes. So that's <laughs> kind of fine. <laughs> oh, you big creep. <laughs> <laughs> we gave him that bloody suit. <laughs> 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 Sleeping in a bloody shop doorway in the West End. <laughs> <laughs> we live together. Yeah. Sorry? Yes, we live together. Like, one of it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so something about their choice, really. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> ah. Ah. About our choice? Yeah, well, I, 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 haven't you got any girlfriends or anything? Yeah. I, I, right, yeah, they see. come round and we shag together in a foursome. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that what everyone does? Nice. Do we? <laughs> 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 Who was that with you, then? I didn't notice anyone else except you. <laughs> Why me? <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on? Yeah. yeah. Well, I noticed on the back of your video, um, <sighs> football is behaving that badly. You've, you've got a Leeds United t shirt on. I know. I know, which is absolute cack. And also, I have to say that the company's gone into receivership that made that thing as well. You know, <laughs> That's a good plug, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's absolute yeah. cack. Yeah, yeah. So you can get that in your bargain basket. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And the director was a Leeds fan, and I turned up expecting it. To but be you've there, got a Barnet shirt on on the front of the video. I know, and also you see, it's absolute. It was just a, a shambles, you know, just a, a, a absolute shambles when I turned up. You know, absolute to shower. Get, darling, <laughs> expecting to get cosy as a makeup or something. <laughs> and one turns up, not even a Winnebago to speak of. <laughs> it was horrible. Well, you know, I mean, I had to go and change into some old smelly ass somewhere into a. Fucking, I'm allowed to say fuck now. No, no okay. Yeah. I was going to change some damp room into a bloody lead shirt. Imagine myself and me, the professional, came out looking as I was enjoying it. Can mm. I point out that <laughs> <laughs> there are people here tonight who work in factories, who uh, West Ham fan there. Yeah, well, I'm sorry street. about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'd is... love to be in a video. Like well, that, mate, so. you know you can have mine and you can pretend. You know, you superimpose <laughs> yourself into it because it is cash. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Is that anyway. on the back? It is cack. No, I think, I think it'd probably sell more if we did bl emblazon it in red across the front. Buy this, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work with our video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wild sex in front of 50,000! Uh, so we got a letter from Stuart Bates, who lives in Bolton, and he's sent us a picture of Ron Atkinson uh, receiving an award. And if you look close at this, you wonder, people are saying that Coventry aren't going to win anything this season. Look at that. <laughs> and it's good to see that the New England boss has managed to find a job for Brian Clough. <laughs> oh, he got very red there. He's got to supply the coat to match his face. Yeah. Very good <laughs> he used to wear that green jumper all the time, didn't he? And then looked a bit like a stuffed olive. <laughs> I don't think these people know what a stuffed olive uh, right. is, Dave. Nice. You've got to remember, you're in the stockbroker class when it comes to wages and taxation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about, mate? I have no idea! <laughs> you know stuffed olives, green with a little red bit. Yes! Oh. Stuffed <laughs> olive. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> my tight shorts grasp my pumping thighs! My tight shorts grasp my pumping thighs! 
Of course, old people, they don't, they don't go to games so much anymore because some of them can't stay awake for the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> Roddy, <laughs> wake up! <laughs> Sorry, I think the camera just caught me burping. Just as it came back. I wouldn't worry about that. No, I don't worry about that. Well, we got a lot of letters this week, uh, as ever, and we got one from Steve Hackett, who... Uh, no, Simon Hackett. Steve Hackett used to be in Genesis. <laughs> True, actually. Simon Hackett from... Doesn't he write, then? Eh? The bloke from Genesis? No, he never writes to us, ever. <laughs> Miserable. Shame, because I used to like them when I was 14. Anyway, uh, we got a letter from Simon Hackett from Milford Haven, and it's a little clipping from Motoring and Leisure magazine. The sort of magazine which is read by rather sad people, normally. <laughs> uh, but not by Simon Hackett. And uh, he showed us this clipping for an advert for... Let's just have a look at it. Never wash your car again, it says. But if we look at paragraph two, unlike other cleaning agents, dry wash and guard does not into the paintwork on your car and is used by Butley Motor Museum, Tony DiRigo, <laughs> <laughs> and thousands of motorists. Now, is that the saddest endorsement you've ever seen? <laughs> How are you doing, all right? Well, in 1936, um, you may not know this, but uh, Movie Tony used to do it then, and Pathé didn't have the rights to film the cup final. No, really? No, that what had happened is they used to get in for free to film the cup final, and oh, the FA like suddenly said, we want you to pay. The rights. And they wouldn't. Mm. So they had to... Um, they weren't allowed to film the cup final at all, but they still had to do reports on it, because it was in the news. So they had to do a report on the cup final without being able to show the cup final at all. It's absolutely true. 1936. So this is what Movie Tone came up with, right, for their so-called coverage of the 1936 cop final. When the ball is touched off in a cup final, the roar of the crowds is heard miles away, and every sportsman witnessed the great event can imagine the picture. These scenes are typical of the game which thrills the popular imagination of winners. <laughs> the weaving and fainting of the forwards, the tenacious tackling and passing of half-backs, the steady covering and kicking of full-backs, and sometimes a tremendous climax, a goal. <laughs> but actually, though, some of the jokes that players do to each other during interviews are very good indeed. Very fun. Shall I have two points, eh? Yes, yes. Still Still there, that no, no one's nicked it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Gary Lineker is a tosser. <laughs> <laughs> Behave yourself. Behave yourself. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if we frighten this... Yeah. <laughs> do you want to do your uh, get fox hunt noise? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's constipated. Uh, it's not working. <laughs> I don't know again, shall I? <laughs> oh, it's like international dance. <laughs> oh, Having said that, yeah, I did once a series on Sunday league football over in Hackney Marshes, and that was a, that was oh, a belter. Yeah, 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 yeah that I was remember. A great that's great. The best of that, I've got to tell you, the best of that. Uh, we were doing the final, and we used to, it was the, when Stoy Bucharest, I think, had that terrible European Cup final, nil-nil. Yeah, uh, it was the dreariest one ever. And the same crew was doing Sunday League football with us. Mm. Uh, and they came from the Wednesday to Sunday, and as fates would have it, this was a blinding game. Decided on penalties, two pub sides, extraordinary goals from 35 yards, and it decided on penalties. But the referee, who we mic'd up, and of course was getting this <laughs> tremendous abuse, and I think we'd have to cut around this, sent a real star player off towards the end. He just wanted to get on telly, I think. And he said, he's up, well, as they all do, no <laughs> difference there. Anyway, so he sent him off. And then before he'd start the game, he walked out to our cameras to clear up what happened there. And I'm trying to comment on this. And he walked out to our cameras and said, I just want to clear this up for your viewers at home. I have sent off uh, number nine Sykes because he called me a cunt. <laughs> and he called me a cunt. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are at home. That's exactly why. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you, I'm glad I'm not doing the edit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a letter from um, who's this? Dennis, a, uh, a Villa fan from Hertfordshire. <laughs> yeah, but a Villa fan got the Christian name out and then had a bit of a mental blank. Uh. <laughs> I don't know what that'll do. <laughs> and it says, uh, dear David and Frank, what has happened to Graham Kelly? He used to be a fat bloke with chubby cheeks. Well, thanks for writing yeah, that in. Yeah. <laughs> he 
Is it true that story about Partick Thistle? They had a cop game and uh, it actually made them a lot of profit. They were in the red and they made a load of money out of in this game. And they all went to celebrate after, and they, they were so cheering, they all got a bit uh, pissed, and they had to turn the floodlights off. Do you know what I think? And the electricity yeah. cost more than the profit <laughs> they <made. laughs> I think that probably is. I remember reading yeah. about that. And I think my own favourite, Colin Hendry, who looks absolutely marvellous in this. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Ham St Clement. You. Yeah, Pat Butcher. That looks like John Pertwee, <laughs> but in a car crash. <laughs> it does. No, I don't mean <laughs> the you put the word after the <laughs> <laughs> The thing about Colin Hendry, though, is um, you might say he's ugly, but he knows how to put himself in situations where actually he looks rather more attractive. It's the national anthems, I think, John. Yeah, have you noticed that the national anthems take ages to start? Mm. Someone else noticed that. And then they sorry, got it wrong. They sorry, someone's wrong leaving. The... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people go to the toilet, but I believe that's because the England team are in. No, that's, uh, the, <laughs> that's the groundsman at party. They still want to put the light off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all think, like, as soon as the Italian goes down, looks injured, mm. that he must be play acting. But it's true? well known on the continent that Englishmen don't like going down. So. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. How right. <laughs> <laughs> are you, Frank? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've done about that. <laughs> yeah. God, if you need haggis, it needs anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Anyway. <laughs>
Uh, here we have a clip which we call the longest ever question for the shortest ever answer. Klaus Tomford, das sind ja bitte als ehrliche Haut bekannt. Es gab ja viele umstrittene Szenen. Wie würden Sie denn die beurteilen? Ich sage jetzt mal Faul Hamann an Savice, Fragezeichen. Elfmeter. <laughs> I, was, I was doing stuff for the government and at one point I was taken to a pig farm and a pig has... It wasn't a... you that did the tiles. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Fugitives are number one. <laughs> Jimmy Hill, of course oh, it is. Jimmy Hill! Oh, so sit down, Jimmy. <laughs> Please. Oh, God. <laughs> Fabulous. Jimmy's high tip. <laughs> Jimmy, good to see you, mate. It's very good to be here. I saw the programme last week. Oh, yes? Very good. Enjoyed it. Yeah, mm. can't do it every week. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, it's lovely. We've been waiting for 51st episode. We thought we must get Jimmy Hill on, and eventually you've landed. So we're very happy about that. Yeah, it's good to see you. It is good. So, what do you think about um, the way the championship panned out, Jimmy? Well, like Des, we'd love to. I mean, we don't really. When I say we don't care, we do care who wins it. But on the other hand, um, from a broadcasting point of view, <laughs> with which I have no relationship, as has already been established, <laughs> we like it to go just to the last minute. And uh, also, personally, which got me into trouble with Manchester United supporters, I said, you know, I'd like to see someone else win it, because I like to see it go round, the championship, that is. Yeah. And, uh, I wonder that what you basis, meant. <laughs> 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 I've had a very bad day today, actually, <coughs> forgive me. Uh, it's you? our celebration at the end of the season, uh, where we Who's, have... What, just your families? Not... <laughs> 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 it's a long time since I've been in season, but nevertheless... <laughs> <laughs> we... <laughs> You want to speak to Boo Boo about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I um, passed Boo Boo with great care on the way through. Uh, um, but on the other hand, it is, you know, I, I, people look at I've been Fulham chairman, Fulham player, Coventry City manager, Coventry City board member, and whatever. Uh, and I just love football, and I do like to see the honours go round. I like to see good games <laughs> of football, I like to see exciting players. Yeah. Uh, even, I even watch Brighton at times because Des, you know, that's his enthusiasm. And uh, I, I worry about Brighton's troubles at yeah. the moment, uh, along with Des, because it's... Uh, that pebble it's beach. Mm. Very uncomfortable, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> they get hot. I don't, they I get don't know hot. what you're doing on it, but it's not all that it's easy like to play thing. football on it either. No, that's... Yeah. No. <laughs> you're right there, But Jimmy. you're a purist, Just aren't you? Just will be playing football on it. Yeah. You're a it's purist, really. You like the passing game, don't you? 
I, I like to see professional players do something that I don't think I could have done when I was playing. Now, straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Jim. Light hit the goals. Go on. <laughs> Light hit the <laughs> goals. <laughs> what are you looking at Danny for? <laughs> 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 Well, it's like better than looking at Des. <laughs> <laughs> You've Sorry. still got it, Jim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's um, you know I I like to see uh, exciting players. I mean, Gaza is silly to say the only player we've got who's English who is different, but he is different. He's got great skill, uh, and I look to the day when we will have a dozen Gazas. Contesting the midfield place. Yeah, I wouldn't England. like to be in that nightclub though. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm during the game. I like. Right. Yeah, wouldn't be any yeah. room. Would there? No, but at the moment, <laughs> at the moment, <laughs> there's a serious footballing. I'm sorry. You're a serious lot out there, aren't you? What we what we want is the capability and the professionalism of the clubs, but at the same time. Um, someone who breaks all the rules mm. and when he should pass it, holds on yes. to it, and when he should pass it again, holds on to it again, yes. and then produces something which even old players like myself, we say, man, that's fantastic. That's what I look for in football. So you don't like the long ball game? <laughs> <laughs> he got King Cloudsy, I mean, but he wasn't English, is he? Get some no, no, not, not Alan Ball. <laughs> oh, Alan Ball. <laughs> <laughs> the long ball. The long ball. The long ball game. Oh, well. <laughs> the Alan Ball. <laughs> <laughs> I mustn't say the Allen Ball game won't be yeah. with us for long because I hope it will, and I hope Manchester City bounce back because they've you know, had a rough time. And do you think Ball will bounce back? <laughs> <laughs> do you think he'll um, frighten that steward? Yes, yeah, the long ball game. Yeah. The, no, the long ball game, though, is something you've always been against, isn't it? You've always championed passing I'm, and skill. I've not been. I've not been. I mean, it, it's very difficult when you make uh, your comment like that, ask a question like that. The long ball game came from Stan Cullis by via a man who was a mathematician who worked out the, the best way to win football matches. Stan Cullis Wolverhampton. Stato, you're out of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a statistician uh, and the wing commander reap and that the way to win them, <laughs> they are. You want to know about the long ball game? You yeah, see, was he actually in an aeroplane, the ball Nobody's family. interested. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the aeroplane's got a long way to go yet. But the the uh, and we're not de <laughs> we're not dealing with seagulls, hopefully tonight. But it arose. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you're just free associating. <laughs> Keep with it, Jimmy. Oh. This is the bit where I normally go on to Alan Hansen. <laughs> The trouble with... Uh, there are lots of good things. <laughs> Isn't it marvellous? I should get a job as a comic, because I don't have to make the gag and they laugh. <laughs> Listen which to either Jimmy. says something about me or it says it about you. But if you... <laughs> <laughs> no, I can fight back. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have survived as long as I have. But mm. it's a very interesting thing. Are you taking the audience on? <laughs> They're my mates. Offering them help. They're, they're <laughs> here, they're interested in football, obviously. Yeah. They're not interested in entertainment, otherwise they've gone somewhere else. Oh. <laughs> Because I can be difficult, but if you ask me a serious yeah. question on football, I confess to the audience and to you and to Danny, I try and answer it seriously because I'm still passionately can you do interested. Under five minutes? Uh, <laughs> if you would not interrupt in under five seconds, I can do it in under five minutes, but that's another question. No. <laughs> Whoa, keep going. We often. <laughs> We often, you know, we often have that edit with Jimmy where he pops back on again. <laughs> Actually, well, I wish this was live. Most of that will be cut out by the time they don't take the bits in, you know. This is recorded. You realise this? <laughs> recorded television. If you win in these seats, by the time it gets out, you're done. I have to tell you, Jimmy, that Stato is laughing at you now. Now, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's an achievement in itself. Yes. But we couldn't record it because of continuity, and that would be yeah, it. Yeah, that would be terrible. Anyway, Jimmy, we've all accept. I mean, we had a bit of a laugh. Everyone accepts. I think that you do know about football. You know about and you're, are the finer points of the game. You like to watch attractive football. And to remind us all, here's a shot of you giving a team talk when you were a manager at Coventry City. What I want under those circumstances is to use all this space here. 
Fullback will chip a long ball up into the space. It doesn't need to be particularly accurate as long as it's high and clears everybody. And then the centre ball can pick us up. We must make sure that we've got somebody going through that middle, don't you think? Well, that's true, Brian, I want that in the end. But for the time being, I want us to work just on this one move. <laughs> Can you believe that idiot manager was then the manager of Coventry City? Third division, second division, first division, now 29 years and they're still there. God bless them. Yeah. 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 Isn't it lovely? Yeah. <laughs> so, of course, Jimmy, you're now, you're now uh, you know, the, probably the most famous pundit. You're really the godfather of punditry. You sort of invented the whole idea of... It's true, this, the, the, the idea of a panel that will talk about the game. Because it didn't really happen in the early 60s. No, no. I, I, well, there I mean, wasn't much football on the telly then, was there, really? No, it wasn't. You had the cup final and that was about it in the 60s. Well, I think... Don't try and take the credit away from <laughs> Jimmy. Yeah. No, no, well, I... Oh, no, he's... he's but he's, when you were at ITV, the, I mean, the 1970 World Cup is when I first remember there being a panel yeah. that really talked about the games. We shouldn't mention that because it's BBC Two and that was ITV. And it yeah. was any time, actually, that ITV have got a major share of sports audience when they've been against the BBC in any major sport. That's the only time it's ever happened. But Never happened again, of course. Yes. You were with the ITV, though, weren't you? Yeah. Well, was that why? Yeah. Uh, no, we had... We had, <laughs> <laughs> we had the panel of Malcolm Allison, Paddy Creeran, Bob McNabb yeah. and Derek Dugan. Wasn't Clough on the panel? No, <laughs> no, no, he was... He was very young there. He was he was learning how to misbehave at that yeah. age. Yeah. I think the, well, I think the essence of a good pundit is the ability to sum up the character of a player in a few well chosen words. Like here you are analysing an FA Cup semi final from six or seven years ago. A lot of power really on the half volley. Now my verdict on that is because in my view, Grobler is an honest man, and if you look at his reaction when he came up from that, it said, "All right, I, you, I should have got there. I didn't. It was a goal." He wouldn't want to cheat, Bruce Grobler. He's a man. <laughs> Will you believe it? <laughs> Unbelievably, playing a charity match yesterday, mm. I was alongside Bruce Grobler, uh, <coughs> who has dislocated his shoulder, so even if no, he were allowed... He was lie, lying because he had bets on him losing, apparently. <laughs> 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 and uh, all I'm saying, we wished each other well, and I hope he's back in the game soon, whatever, yes. whatever the history. Yes. Well, I hope he didn't do it. Yeah. I yeah, really hope, hope he didn't, he didn't do, it. do it. Because if we find out that there are people that play, fail the game, there's a few West Brom players I want to word with. <laughs> 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 Over about 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> what, can, what has happened to West Brom? Uh, I mean, no, thank you, Mr. Fulham <laughs> Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> But I know we've had a lot of bad luck, but I mean, uh, that's why I'm asking you. We've had a bit less bad luck. Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the usual thing, you know, uh, there seems to be no money at the club, but things have turned around now. We've got, we've got this, the Flying Dutchman, Richard Sneakers. Mm. Mm. And uh, we've well, lost two games in the last 19, I think, yeah. so put your monos next season, Jimmy, that's my mm. advice. Yeah. For, for, for what? what? He's got plenty of money, he won't, he won't miss it. No, the idea of no, putting money on West Brom has finally shut him up. <laughs> yeah. I was stunned. No, I honestly think we could, we'll be there next season. You mark my words. Marvellous this programme, they invite you on it, you get about three sentences out. And That's not true, right. is it, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> three sentences? You've beaten Danny Baker. Home watching the telly. <laughs> Bloody other great <laughs> train, Rob has got shorter sentences than you. I say, oh, oh, he's rattling away talking. there like mad. <laughs> <laughs> I could have done anything this evening. I mean, <clears throat> no. Uh, <laughs> yes. Des, how can you work with him every week? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not normally like this. I'm just, oh, it's, it's, it's such a relief mm. to be on a programme that's not tightly disciplined. We, the disciplines we work We discipline. I beg your pardon. <laughs> we always discipline him. <laughs> Do you discipline yes. him? Yeah, Kick him under yeah, the Frank desk. Frank a bit of that. Yeah, there's a yeah. clock going, counting down, you know, any minute and things. Don't you? So Are you on countdown as well? <laughs> 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 Only if asked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's no truth, is there, in the rumour? that you've had a love child with Ian Bishop. <laughs> but first, here's Frank Skinner with a rundown of what's been happening in the real football world. Although what is real and what is fantasy? I mean, some might feel that there is no objective reality to speak of, only what we can see this in the mind. This week 
week. Ryan Clough is retiring and Scotland lost. Oh, you have ruined my big moment. <laughs> this week, Dennis Wise played a blinder. Matt Jackson couldn't see. Poor chap. But if he plays his cards right, he'll probably get an MBE. Maimed by elbow, it means Gary Mabbitt's going round to the Queen. So I hope she's got some Nutra Sweet for the tea this week. This week, poor old Gazza got injured, and people say he's fat. When off Sent him on for the second off. Gaza said, second off, what's that? New Year's Eve was a Brahma for Woodsy and Waddle and Palmer. Now they've been fine more than Mike Walker will earn this year. Anyway, talking about football on the television, yeah. uh, it's all changed now, Now, of course, isn't oh, it? Now, now it's now football that, coverage. They've got on-the-spot reporters all over the country waiting to give up to the minute. Well, I'll do that again. Used to be a good show, this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>